welcome audience in Zoom and living streaming platforms of USA graduate education. This is 131 USA event. Uh, here, you will get the uh, latest information about the different majors, learn about the cutting edge knowledge in various fields and in retreat. During the webinar, you can do some marks for your thinking or questions. At the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A session of no less than 15 minutes. Uh, send your questions to the screen through the chat box. We will try to answer many questions as possible. Some of the information may not be available and uh, on the different living streaming platforms. So if you miss some content or you would like to get some links and the contact information, you can send a message to our account, USA Graduate stud, uh, Student. On each platform, explain what you need and we will send it to you as soon as possible. In addition, a gentle reminder for audience in the Zoom to keep the microphone muted. The webinar will be recorded and may be used as a video material for production. Uh, okay, today we are honored to have a Professor Axron Tong. Uh, she is Associate Professor of Department of Molecular Microbiology and Immunology, Associate Dean of uh, Biomedical Master's Programs, Pro uh, Program Director of MMI Departmental Master's Program, Faculty Fellow of USA Center of Excellence in Teaching, Course Director of INTD 531 Cell Biology. And another one, we're also glad to see Wei Ming Yuan. Uh, he is Associate Professor of Department of Molecular Microbiology and Immunology. Uh, Axel and Wei Ming will share with us the content and the information about why come to USA for biomedical graduate studies. Uh, now, turn it over to Axel. Let him say something and introduce himself or today's topic and then beginning our webinar today. Welcome, Axel. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I really appreciate the kind words and the opportunity to present to all of you a few bits and information on USC, the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And I put up here a photo of our campus. So you see it's nice and sunny, which here in Southern California, it is most of the time. And as you know, the location in Los Angeles has lots to offer, although today we will talk primarily about the academics, what is being offered in research and science and education and training and hands-on work here in our laboratories. <clears throat> so the plan for the next 35, 40 minutes is listed here with the agenda. I will give a brief overview of some of the educational opportunities at our university in the field of biomedicine and biomedical research. I will show you a few links to our PhD programs, master's programs and pre-master's programs. Feel free to take screenshots and we will also provide a few URLs, web links for your further information. Now, in my part here, I will not go into great detail into all of these programs. My primary purpose here is just to give a short overview of what USC has to offer in these fields. And then my colleague, valued Professor Yuan will take over and give you hands-on examples of what's going on here. He shows you an example of ongoing research in his lab and also his experience you know, working with the many students we have, including from many types of countries in China as well, and maybe some personal tidbits of his personal journey coming from Asia to North America and pursuing his really very successful career. In the end, we will have plenty of opportunity for question and answers. So very briefly, the University of Southern California is one of the largest private universities. Get this, we have about 50,000 total students. That's really a big number, can fill a city. From 135 countries, including about 6,500 students from China. We have 28,000 faculty and staff. So the ratio of faculty and staff to students is quite high. Now, 
what will uh, Dr. Yuan will probably emphasize as well, we stand out with our programs primarily because we emphasize hands-on research for most of our programs, whether it's master's programs or PhD programs and our MD programs, they all have hands-on research components. So all of our students are encouraged to complement the theory in the core, in the classwork to with uh, practice in the laboratory. And just so you let you know, the, the research exposure in our labs is really unlimited because we encourage all students come to us, participate in what's going on with our research and be proactive and spend as much time as you want in the laboratories. In my lab, of course, every student has a key to the lab and the building so they can come at any time of day or night or weekends as much as they want to. It's really unlimited. We have world-class research going on in many different fields, like the Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center is very well established with many labs focusing on cancer treatment, cancer research, and cancer care overall. Zilka Neurogenetic Institute, we have an Alzheimer's disease research center, and I want to point out also Center for Regenerative Medicine and Stem Cell Research. I'm sure that you have realized that stem cell research has gained much prominence in recent years. Similarly, neuroimaging neuro and informatics is very well known throughout the country. Now, for our students, we have different types of programs. One is the PhD programs in the Biomedical and Biological Sciences, which is abbreviated PIPS. And PIPS, <clears throat> The way PIPS works, it's an umbrella entry program, meaning all students who are interested in our different PhD programs apply to PIPS and spend the first year rotating through different laboratories. And actually the rotations are mandatory. So the students get exposed to various different research environments, laboratories and professors. And at the end of the first year, then these PhD students decide in which of those six PhD programs they would like to go and then specialize on one of these six topics. If you would like to know more about this program, here's a website that leads you directly to PIPS. Make sure you take a screenshot. Information out there. Our master's programs are listed here. There are more than 20. And you see that they cover a very broad field. I am the director of the master's program in molecular microbiology and immunology. This is also the same department where my colleague, Professor Yuan is in that we'll talk to you in a little bit. So that's my home department. I'm the director of this program and we admit per year, anywhere from 10 to 20 students for our two year program. So we have about 30 to 40 master students in our cohort. There are many other programs, for instance, molecular, molecular medicine and so forth. I will not read all of these to you, but emphasize that here on top, it shows the website. Please take a note or a screenshot of the website and you find detailed information in all of these programs. And then finally, we have USC's International Academy. The website is listed here, international.usc.edu. It is <clears throat> uh, an academy especially offered to international students who might not be perhaps 100% ready for advanced graduate studies and or who may have to catch up on their language abilities. So students are encouraged to apply to International Academy, which will then lead to one of our master's programs. Okay, so 
there are three components to this international academy. There's a pre-master's program and they're overlapping. There's a master's preparation program and an intensive English program. Okay, obviously the intensive English program emphasizes particularly learning the English language and brushing up on it and training students to be able to understand what's offered in the lecture hall and also participate you know, vocally in research and, and uh, in the lecture hall. And the master's preparation program tries to fill in perhaps if there are some gaps with courses that programs will then lead to one of the many master's programs that are available. So in essence, this is my last slide before I turn it over to Dr. Yuan. Your future starts at USC. I'm listing here three websites. Take a screenshot. These are the three websites that I just showed you for our PhD programs. And as I mentioned, USC really prides itself on its international composition. We have so many international students, it's fun to work with them. You always learn something from the students as well. And it's great to have so many international students. And having said that, I know it was very short, but hopefully I have provided also the websites for further information. And there will be Q&A questions elaborate, elaborate more on these um, over to my valued colleague here at USC, Professor Yuan. He was briefly introduced, but maybe we can hear some more about it. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Axel. That's a very good background for me to start with. <clears throat> good morning, good evening, everyone, um, depending on where you are. Um, my name is Wu Yuan, and I I first should introduce myself. Um, let me share my screen. Can everybody see my slides? So I can go to presentation. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Wu Mi Wan. I'm a um, um, faculty colleague with uh, Dr. Uh, Shanto in the Department of Mi uh, Molecular Microbiology and Immunology here in the medical school. Um, I wanna show my education background first. I received my bachelor's degree and a master's degree from uh, Fudan University in Shanghai, China, many years ago. Um, and I immigrated uh, to, uh, I moved to United States in 1995 to start my PhD studies in, uh, uh, in, in the US. Uh, and I received my PhD um, in 2000. Um, from University of Texas at Austin. And I briefly stayed a little after, then moved to Yale University for a postdoc um, a training for five and a half years. Um, that's two, 2006 is postdoc title. Then I changed to a different title, but essentially still postdoc training for five and a half years before I moved to uh, LA to join USC um, in January 2009 to become a fa faculty member. So I've been here for almost 15 years. Um, and um, and I want to first, because I've, I'm a faculty member, I should introduce my own research first. And uh, Dr. Shanto has wisely um, uh, advised me not to get into too much details. So I have a, uh, I will very briefly uh, explain uh, um, my um, research, uh, my so my research are mostly focused focusing on the a, a group of uh, um, um, important immune cells called NKT cells in the, in our innate immune system, um, and it's mostly three aspects: uh, how to target in this innate immune um, cells for anti-tumor or antiviral treatment, and I we generate our own mouse models, and we try to understand how the different viruses, herpes virus, influenza virus, or more recently, the, um, the SARS-CoV-2 virus targeting this innate immune um, uh, function and try to establish their, um, their infection. And then, um, then um, by understanding this, we will be able to invent a better ways of uh, antiviral treatment or therapies for immune, immune therapies. So I'll tell you a very brief story about the, how we 
uh, um, generate uh, a better mouse model to better target this uh, innate uh, T cells for anti tumor, mostly for anti tumor treatment. So I introduce uh, uh, the discovery of uh, the NKT cells very briefly. It's uh, uh, not too much details. So it was initially discovered by a group of Jap Japanese scientists who were identifying um, um, C compounds that uh, that is uh, that could be anti tumor. And it's from a small island called uh, Okinawa. Probably, uh, if you if you uh, speak Chinese, it's uh, Chongsen um, in uh, in southern um, Japan. And the the uh, the Japanese um, uh, scientists uh, fractionate or purify the different fractions of the sea sea um, um, seaweed compounds and they try to and identify uh, uh, what the what components of this, uh, uh, what components of this uh, seaweeds um, food? Because the reason they go after this area is this area is one of the best longevity area in the world because uh, they have a very low tumor um, cancer incidence rate. So people believe what they eat, they must have something good in their food. So. That's why that's one of the rationale. They go after this seaweed compound. They do fractionation. They try to purify what kind of components could be really anti-tumor, and that's you can you can see in the products that in the market you can even have seaweed extract extracts for food supplements. That's one of the reason for marketing this uh, this seaweed um, um, compounds. And the scientists did find that one of the major uh, 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 um, uh, compound that uh, that is very anti-tumor. They use uh, uh, they use a mouse model, tumor model, and find a lipid is very uh, very uh, potently anti-tumor. And it's called a, a, a glycolipid called alpha galactosylamide. You don't know you don't need to know the details, but it's a lipid. Okay. So, and there are a lot of uh, basic research from all over the world, from thousands of uh, uh, labs and turn out to be a, uh, the, the group of T cells later studied by people like me, they, they are NKT cells. And this NKT cells are conserved between um, a mouse and human. Um, there are NKT cells in mouse, there are NKT cells in human because they're so potent anti-tumor, naturally people would think that, uh, let's try this lipid in human. And it turned out uh, in human, it's very minimally uh, uh, effective. So, uh, uh, and I don't need to show you data. I don't want to overwhelm you with, uh, with the data, but it's well doc documented that this particular lipid is very anti-tumor in mouse, but it turned out it's very minimal effect in human. So the the chemists have invented many many uh, new ways to improve this lipid. So when when I joined this field, we tried to build a better mouse model before we spend millions and millions of dollars to do clinical trial to do this uh, uh, um, to identify more potent lipid uh, anti tumor uh, um, 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 drugs. So. So that's how we started the work. We tried to build a so-called humanized mouse. So we use a genetic manipulation of mouse genome. We generate a, 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 a new mouse model, which have uh, the CD1D molecule, which is a key molecule for the NKT cells development and, uh, and the function, functionality. Uh, we, we humanize this molecule by knocking human um, CD1D and uh, and turn out uh, you don't have to know this. This is all well or already published uh, data. So it's uh, um, in published more than ten years ago. Uh, more than ten years ago now. So um, and we can you can see from our data here we successfully knock out all endogenous CD1D, replace with all human CD1D. Okay. So and we more more technical. Um, a result is uh, you can see that this is a way of uh, this is a, a method called the flu cytometry. That's the way we detect the NKT cells in 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 vivo, and you can see in mouse models 
uh, there are a lot of NKT cells. This is the percentage of the NKT cells in in immune or immune cell population. And we found that the Inarma is called, we call it the human CD1 knocking. And it, there is only one tenth of this. But the good thing about this mouse model is it's a, it's exactly like a human population. In human, it's exactly one tenth of the amount of NKT cells in, in mouse. So uh, as a result, our mouse model uh, uh, turned out to be a very useful uh, um, model for 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 modeling new uh, anti-tumor uh, lipids. So this model has been licensed to two pharmaceutical companies, and uh, we are very happy that uh, this uh, uh, this discovery was awarded by the University Innovation and Commercialization Award uh, a few years ago by USC. So this is what the we one of my project. We also work on how the NKT cells can be antiviral, and including the SARS-CoV-2, we found that if we uh, mobilize this NKT cells, we can be, uh, uh, the the um, the host can, the animals, we cannot do human yet. And uh, the mouse models, can, the mouse can respond much better to uh, um, SARS-CoV-2 COVID infection. So, so my work um, has been formed by uh, postdocs, graduate students, technicians and undergraduates. So this is a picture taken a few years ago uh, um, uh, of my own lab when I was um, thankfully promoted. And you can uh, see my lab people have uh, postdocs and uh, and technicians, graduate students. So right now I have been in USC for uh, about 15 years. So I want to share some of my experience of working with students. So again, as you can imagine that the, my own um, mentoring, so-called mentoring philosophy would be affected or influenced or actually um, 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 formed during my own um, training. And when, when, why I, I was trained by other uh, mentors. So you can see I, I did my PhD in UT Austin and I did my postdoc at the uh, Yale University. Um, and I want to show you a picture of my PhD uh, advisor. His name is Dr. Uh, Robert Krug. And uh, uh, he's, uh, he's, this is a picture when he retired a few years ago, 19, I'm sorry, too old, 20, 2017 or 2018, one of those two years. So, um, uh, I went to UT Austin um, and to um, uh, to attend his uh, retirement party. So I had a picture with him. So he's my boss for a PhD. So I want to tell you a little bit about, about my PhD uh, experience. So this is my favorite experiment result so far, still from my PhD. Um, this is a, a, if you have done some biology, or biochemistry, you know, this is a SDS page gel. This is a gel to, um, to, to detect or identify proteins. And this is a, a, a gel that uh, when I was doing my PhD experiments and I did this second time, the second time um, I tried this experiment and I was so happy because I'm the fifth year of my PhD study. I'm worrying about my graduation as you, probably can imagine, I don't know whether you can imagine a fifth year PhD student uh, uh, worrying about the graduation. And uh, I got this result, I was so happy. So, so I, I, I carried this uh, this uh, gel image. I walked into my, my boss's uh, office, Dr. Krug's office. And I said, hey, Bob, look like, looks like I got this, uh, I got a band. Uh, my my boss, Dr. Krug, was reading and he saw my gel. He stood up from his chair uh, behind the desk and uh, shook my hands. And uh, I, 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 I was uh, quite shocked by this experience because I was a fifth year graduate student worrying about the graduation. And for him as a mentor, he met uh, as a professor, he immediately see the importance of this picture. 
So uh, he shook my hands. I was quite moved at that moment. And uh, it, it is an important uh, discovery because we identified a new enzyme in the in the protein uh, uh, conjugation pathway. But uh, the reason I'm telling you this uh, uh, short story is that the, um, you can imagine that's probably one of my highlights in my career so far. So I I was uh, uh, um, I'm still feel very proud by this experience. So this instead of worrying about uh, my own graduation or future career, I feel like, oh, maybe I can do biology as a career, as really do, uh, that, that's the moment I probably really tell myself, maybe I can hang on and keep doing uh, research. I can be, become a professor. That's, that's really a moment that uh, uh, established uh, my, so a little bit confidence in my in my career. So uh, I am also telling you this because I feel so important the mentor, the impact of the mentor on the students. So for him, he's just so happy, so joyful. And he stood up and shook my hands. I, I but I was quite moved. I'm telling you this little story. So uh, uh, so this is a moment that I feel the importance of mentorship. Okay. So this is my postdoc um, uh, advisor. So he's a British gentleman. He's uh, from Britain. Uh, he 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 influenced my my of mentor uh, my way of mentoring a lot because he really work with the students or fellows side by side. He does the experiment himself. He he's almost eighty now. But until a couple of years ago, he still work at the bench. So uh, uh, he likes to run a gel or two, uh, as this page gel. And one thing he he um, influenced me. He uh, the way he inspires students is he he would say to his graduate student, "Let's do the same experiment simultaneously. You do one, I do one. Let's see who does better." And I figure out late later. I figure out uh, that's a really a good way because no matter which way, if the student does better, it's even better. If the professor does better, he can show the student how to do it. Either way, so this is a. I mean, I'm I I this is a, what I was influenced during my postdoc. So, I'm just telling you my training experience how. Uh, so. Uh, fortunately, I have we have uh, uh, the master program directed by Dr. Chanto. We have, we are a very successful master program. So I was very fortunate to have many great master students uh, uh, going through my um, in the lab in the past few years. You can see they they go for PhD, they go for uh, very good uh, universities, Dartmouth. Um, University of Toronto, Case Western, all good universities, or they go to biotech uh, 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 companies as well. So depends on depending on your your goal of your uh, career or your life goal of your life. So it's a it's an individual. So I want to um, kind of list up my. A mentoring principle. So first, uh, my my principle would be mentoring as friends. This is, you can see what I what how I was influenced by my own training experience. So it's not just uh, 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 um, 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 showing respect or consider be considerate of each other. It's really a work side by side. So I I I really work side by side with my students. So uh, and. Uh, if the student does better than me, I'm happier because that means uh, students can do better than me and the, the students will feel better too. And uh, we can share the learning and the education experience. And I think the uh, the last uh, uh, point is uh, I want to maintain a long-term friendship with my mentees. Down the road, uh, um, um, as the mentees go through their own 
career path, we can be collaborators, we can be colleagues, and we can help each other. We can continuously uh, sharing, uh, share uh, learning and education experience. Those, is, those are what I can come up with. So I want to share one uh, email I received uh, last the Saturday, the past the Saturday uh, I just just passed. The student uh, recently, I mean, she find a job in New Jersey, but the company was uh, uh, dissolved her department. So she had to look for a, a job around. And uh, after a couple of weeks, she, uh, she find a job back to San Diego. She was so happy. She, she, she wrote me that uh, I was very happy that uh, the work in your lab really helped me to find a job. So um, um, I don't take much credit here, but I'm really, really uh, happy to my students that the, the training she received in my lab was really helpful for her. Coming to the point, the white come to USC for graduate studies. Uh, Dr. Chantal has given you uh, a lot of reasons for coming to USC. So I can uh, say it's add something different. So uh, I assume that the, all the audiences, most of the audience must be undergraduate student. So if you are sure you want to go for a PhD and uh, you are fortunate enough to get admitted to PhD, Absolutely, you go for a PhD uh, directly. But in a lot of cases, uh, for reasons we could discuss a little more, nowadays to get directly get to, into PhD programs, especially for international students, it's becoming harder and harder. So in many cases, you would need to go to a master's uh, 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 programs. In a way, it's also good because you could really test the water whether you really want to go for a PhD because it's a really big commitment. The reason that the PhD programs are so competitive, there is a reason because the job market for PhD, PhDs are really limited in many ways. So whether you really want to commit to yourself for a PhD long-term commitment to do a master program, it's also helpful for you to think about that. But if you are really interested in science uh, um, um, and your master program training will help you a lot to move to PhD program. And then after that, in most cases, in my career so far, I have no two uh, scientists moved from PhD directly to faculty position. Well, most of the uh, uh, most of us, you would need to do a postdoc training, and th then after the postdoc training, you can look for academic positions. Or in other, in a lot of situations, you would need to go for pharmaceutical uh, companies uh, positions. During the whole process, any stage in your training, you can go look for a pharmaceutical uh, 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 company's position. Based on my experience, the most important, once you have a PhD program, a PhD degree, the most important uh, period of time for you to, to decide your ultimate position is the postdoctoral training, uh, postdoc postdoctoral training, because if you go to academia position, most likely you're going to carry on the work from your postdoc training. If you go to a pharmaceutical company, most likely people would look for what you were exactly doing in your postdoctoral training. They like your skills. They like your knowledge, they recruit to you. Um, therefore, for postdoctoral training, you should go for the top university as good as possible. All the Ivy Leagues, 
the top uh, top 10 schools. However, before that, um, uh, for PhD student and master's students, it's more important to have a good thing, training environment to start your career. For this, USC filled the niche very, very well. I believe USC is, a, if not the best, one of the best uh, schools for you to receive graduate training before you move on to the very intensive, very important postdoctoral training period of time. So why is that? Um, uh, USC have a great training environment because um, Dr. Chanta have mentioned to you, it's great research environment. It's highly, highly uh, diverse and dynamic environment. And uh, we have great uh, labs, great research environment great uh, research uh, set up here. And uh, it's, as I mentioned, for the training period of time to have a good mentors for you, it's really key because that's how you start to um, learn how to, how to uh, navigate the academic world, how to pick up the basic skills in the in the um for your research, uh, oh, I'm on. I'm mostly talking about the biomedical research. Uh, that's why if you have a good training, uh, tra uh, trainer, mentors have a good working relationship, you can learn the nuts and bolts of uh, of the detailed the skills and maintain a good interaction that would be really, really helpful for your career development before you move on to postdoctoral training. And Dr. Chanta already mentioned, but I've already made this slide, so I still show you that it's a multicultural city. It's very diverse. It's very accommodative. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, USC is uh, very proud to be one of the most uh, uh, most internationalized university, and you have uh, we have a huge population of international students. Uh, those are very helpful, but I would still think that find a good mentors are very helpful too. And uh, last but not least, we have great weather, and for sure it will definitely help you. When I talked about the international students, we actually have a whole spectrum of student, uh, international students. Even for Chinese students, we have Chinese students have already come to United States to receive high school education, college education. Pretty much they are very, very adapted into American uh, life living here. We have also international students just come from uh, uh, China without the, not too much um, US living, uh, United States living experience or even living abroad or living in another city. So uh, the level of maturity or experience, it's very diverse. So you do need to have a very supportive uh, environment for you to start to embark on the developing your biomedical career. That's also important for you to have a good mentors to help you uh, uh, to transit from uh, into a really uh, uh, good training for your uh, biomedical uh, uh, education here. So those are, I think that's uh, pretty much what I want to say uh, for, 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 um, the training environment, and uh, that's, and I want to save enough time for for questions. If you, um, or we can have more more discussions about this. And if you have any questions about uh, my experience, uh, feel free. And uh, my contact info is my the best way to contact me will be my email.
All right, thank you. And I'd be happy to ask any questions to even in Chinese is fine. Uh, my Chinese is not perfect, but I can manage. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your wonderful talk, Yuan. Uh, we believe that our audiences have gained a lot of very uh, valuable information. Uh, let us understand the USA by medicine advantages and the special places from more perspectives. I have believe that everyone will be more determined to choose USA, uh, know what can be learned in USA, what can uh, kind of development. Mm. And now, uh, well, we see some questions from artisans on Zoom and uh, various living streaming platforms. Um, they also want to know more information. So uh, let's take a look uh, on the Zoom. Uh, the chat box uh, have a question. Hi, Professor Yuan. I'm uh, curious. Uh, if you had the chance to start your career over again, would you still uh, choose your current uh, profession? The reason uh, I am asking is that as I'm a student currently uh, in, uh, immersed uh, in the study of biology, I confess I am uh, grappling with uh, uncertainty about the uh, further prospects uh, this field has. So mm, can uh, Professor Yuan to answer and say something? Thank you, thank you. This this is such a huge question. I mean, um, it's it's a really big question. I I'm I'm still uh, what what I can tell you is I'm still happy with what I'm doing now. So it's. Uh, it's really how you, what's your goal of your life? And uh, I, uh, I'm much older than most of you. So we grew up in a very different era, different. Uh, and uh, of course, we form our, what we want to do for our lives. Um, I definitely understand that the uh, um, younger generations have much more opportunities. They know much better. Uh, 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 much more um, knowledge um, and, and they have more choices. Um, from my experience in our age, um, I, I, I still think I, um, I, I, I don't regret for sure what I can tell you is uh, um, um, I still like what I'm doing. I'm not the richest, I am not the most successful one. But uh, but I think I can still have some uh, peaceful time. I can do some research I enjoy, and uh, um, I can I can have a, a reasonable living standard. So uh, um, I could be much richer for sure. I I want to be much richer, but but I'm okay. So it depends on how you view your life, for sure. I don't know yeah. whether I answer your question. Uh, okay, thank you. And uh, next one is, uh, how many people are in the master's class? Uh, a member of audience would like to know the class size of the master's program. Uh, yeah, I can certainly answer this question. Uh, the class size varies depending on which master program we're talking about. Now, generally speaking, those master's programs that are focused also on research and encourage the students to join the lab, write a thesis. Those are usually two-year programs, and we have them in biochemistry, molecular bio biology, uh, microbiology in my department. Um, I say the average is about a two-year cohort of anywhere from 20 to 50 students. So admitted per year, anywhere from 10 to 25 new students that join the other half of the cohort. Some of our other programs, for example, in preventive medicine, in case you're in interested in preventive medicines, biostatistics, and so forth, some of them have much bigger programs with maybe 100, 200 students. We also have one online uh, um, preventive medicine program where we have probably three to 400 students. 
But the ones that we focus on, where I'm also the associate dean for the biomedical, hands-on research programs, anywhere from 20 to 50, I would say. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Axel. Um, this audience want to know how many labs like Yuan's lab in USA is great uh, it's great to know there are some master students working in your lab and how to apply. All right, so application to our master's programs is very easy. You would go to the website link that was shown in the slide, which by the way is also, uh, Amy put it in the chat, so make sure you, show, you check the chat, the first few notes are the URLs. Go to the website, it leads you to the applications and the applications are very standard, straightforward, no letter of recommendation, transcripts from your undergraduate studies, um, uh, a personal statement of interest. I, can, I should also mention that for a long time, we required for many of our programs, the GRE, the graduate, um, test, none of our master's programs and also not our PhD programs require the GRE any longer. In some cases, when we have applicants, as I can tell you because I'm the, uh, the director in molecular microbiology and immunology master's program, sometimes we have a case where we review the paperwork and we think, well, not quite convincing we are kind of on the fence and undecided whether to admit the applicant or not in those rare instances we actually might ask for an interview we may contact the applicant and say hey can we do a zoom and let's meet on zoom and chat a little and in most cases actually even though a zoom interview might sound stressful in most cases the zoom interview is for the benefit of students in in the majority of cases, when we do a Zoom interview in the end, we decide, yeah, good student, let's accept that person. Okay, thank you. Can uh, I ask, uh, I think uh, the student asked uh, how many, is that the, the student asked uh, how many labs, like uh, ours in, uh, I probably can add a little more. For medical school, I think we have a lab, uh, um, of course, the different size of labs, but the total PI, I think it's around 200 PIs, uh, um, uh, principal investigators, that means uh, uh, laboratories, about 200. Yes, I should perhaps also add, thank you, Dr. Yuan. I should add that uh, several of our programs have quite a flexibility of, with regard to allowing students which lab they would like to work in. So working in the lab is not mandated by the director of the program or by any professor. We encourage our students to decide for themselves, what is your interest? Which labs are you interested in? And they usually, for example, our master's students, they interview with two or three professors and then the students decide, oh, I think, that's a lab I would like to go into. And I would say also, you know, with especially since we have Professor Yuan here, he's one of our most popular professors because Thank he's you. a very successful mentor. He's doing great work. He has many different projects. You saw a small sample of what's going on in his lab. They're using very many different methods. And our students really like the type of challenging environment that leads them to success. Uh, also, I see a question in the chat where they ask, um, how many of our students end up studying the PhD after completing the master's program? I would say as a very rough number, about half, especially here in, in especially in the programs where we have intensive hands-on training, many students are really interested in carry that further. And because our training is so thorough and well-rounded, 
No, our students are quite successful in applying for high quality PhD programs and use the master as a stepping stone to get into a good uh, PhD program. And you might remember some of the slides that Professor Jan showed you where quite a few of his students ended up in, in the best uh, PhD programs. I would say so about half then some of our students, they go in the industry. Um, and of course, some uh, international students, including from China or from India, prefer to go back right away after the master's and pursue their career further in their home country. I can add a little more, um, Dr. Shanta. Um, I think uh, based on my experience, I think a little less than half um, go to PhD directly because the PhD programs are nowadays are really um, competitive compared to the old days of when we apply for PhD. It uh, seems like so easy. Everybody, almost everybody eventually get into PhD after one or two years, maybe a little longer, but they eventually all get into PhD. Nowadays, it seems the PhD admission is much tougher than uh, than the old days, but I want to add uh, that uh, more more than half people, uh, students move to by uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry, but among them, a few of them still want to come back to apply for a PhD after one or two more years of pharmaceutical industry because. Uh, you will know there is a reason that they might uh, they they want to move back because if you have a only a bachelor degree or master degree in the pharmaceutical industry uh, companies you are doing certain things only allowed to do but you are not in the charging um um uh, uh, position uh, uh, um so some people want to be more more in control position so you to do that, you need to come back for a PhD. So that's that's all a exploration and the career development. So that's one that I want to add. Yeah, thank you for this com uh, extension. I also I see a question in the chat about the developments themselves and regenerative medicine PhD program compared to the masters of stem cell biology and regenerative medicine. And the question is, which one I can have more opportunity to continue with a PhD at USC? Um, <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure I completely understand the question. Naturally, if you if you apply to PIPs and you if you apply to PIPs, you can decide, of course, to get into one of the six programs, PhD programs, one of them is development stem cells and regenerative medicine. But for those students who might not get into PIPs, meaning into a PhD environment, they certainly can start out as a, in a master's program with stem cell and then you know, build up their resume and then from the masters of stem cell then apply uh, also to PIPs and then end up in the stem cell PhD program. However, I should emphasize that we don't usually, we don't have a direct admission from masters to a PhD program in stem cells, okay? They're really separate programs and each one would require a separate application. Yeah. Okay, and I see also, I think we addressed it. Can we choose which professor to study with? The short answer is it depends a little bit on the program. Most of our programs, the answer is yes. Uh, some programs, they ask that the student chooses a lab within the department, say in, in stem cell or in biochemistry. In our program in microbiology, Naturally, when students apply to molecular microbiology and immunology, we assume they're interested in, in, in research related to these topics. But every once in a while, we have students, they say, well, gee, I found out that this professor over there, he's doing this cancer research or pediatric cancer research. I'm really very interested in that research. And we tell the students, sure, talk to the professor, 
if the professor is willing to accept you and you can join the lab of that professor, by all means, do that. So we are mostly interested in just assuring it's a good quality mentorship, a good quality research environment, rather than that it has to be focused on something that's going on within our department. I think the okay. one is and I'm sorry, there's a question. What is the deadline to apply for your program? So for the master's programs, most of the deadlines are end of April, beginning of May. Certainly for molecular microbiology and immunology, where I'm the director, it's May 1st. And we have once per year uh, admission cycle for fall. Some other programs, it depends on the program. They might admit also for spring. It depends. So make sure, uh, look at the website and find out the deadlines are listed there uh, to make sure you know when to apply. I think uh, uh, when, uh, uh, from Jeff Chen um, asking, uh, I think the question is quite a general. Um, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Um, there is uh, a, another one. I was looking for another one from Zihan Chao. Uh, I will ask Jeff Chen's um, uh, question later. So this is a general question. I'm curious how uh, about how can we use our, our biomedical discoveries to uh, to help people. I I think uh, uh, nowadays there is a f uh, fashionable word called a translational uh, uh, study. So meaning that you translate it from bench discoveries to clinical or uh, bedside uh, use. That's a long process, actually. You could see even for the the, the discovery I mentioned, the uh, lipid, the uh, anti-tumor lipid, even that, it takes years, many years to, especially with all the clinical trials, the FDA approvals, it's many years. But for emerging things like uh, COVID, you also saw that the mRNA uh, vaccine it was within within a year. That's the emergency for for, for most of the long term uh, disease cure curement that takes many years. Only for the emerging or uh, public health emergency, they could be speed up for F F FDA special approval, um, emergency authorization. Jeff Chen's question was, I wonder how many of your students end up studying PhD? Oh, uh, we already asked, uh, answered the question, less than a little less than half uh, to go to PhD after master program. But as I said, some a few students went to uh, um, um, uh, bi biotech um, and then they come back for a PhD, apply for a PhD. Okay, there's also a question regarding scholarships. And yes, uh, having funding, finding funding for studies is important, it's critical. With regard to scholarships, I think the short answer is for master's students, Scholarship ships are difficult to come by. We have a few scholarships that pay a part of the tuition, approximately 40 to 50%. However, these scholarships are very few. I can tell you in our program in molecular microbiology and immunology, for the 15 new incoming students, we had one scholarship this year. And of course, that shows small chances for an individual applicant to get funded. So one scholarship for 15 students. You know, I wish it was more, and we're working on getting more funding for our students, but right now the funding is quite difficult. Um, uh, the question from Li Feng, um and asking about uh, how can PhD students apply for the postdoctoral uh, and how long is the postdoctoral um, and does it depend on the university uh, or the candidates? Of course, it's various from individual to individual. So depending on how, um, how well your PhD study went and um, if you, um, you, you will also get your own feeling about the, um, I don't think everybody had my experience of suffering for four years and all of a sudden broke. <laughs> I have a, a surprising discovery, it really enhanced my uh, um, confidence, but not everybody do so. But, 
but uh, if you if your signs go very well you have been um 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 you have you have been very successful um you, you will know and even some postdoctoral um professors would look for a good prof um, postdoc candidate from graduate student so um I, I don't know whether you understand my my meaning that if you're so successful, the postdoc uh, uh, um, advisor could, could could be going after you. But if you are if you are really uh, have a hard time, maybe your science didn't work at this period of time, then you probably want to uh, you might want to go to pharmaceuticals to do something, change your um uh, track a little bit. But those are quite down, uh, far away down the road after you um, uh, start the PhD. Um, you only think about this after three years, uh, th uh, three, four years into your PhD. I hope I answered your question. And the other ones, uh, if you had uh, the chance to start, oh, okay, I think that's the question I, um, I answered. Uh uh, okay, uh, some questions from uh, other living dreaming platforms. Uh, are there any subjects relevant uh, related to agriculture science and technology? Uh, um, Dr. Chanto, do you want to answer? Yes, so did I understand this? Did you say agriculture, agricultural Agri sciences? Yeah, yeah within, I yeah, so our Keck Medical School really focuses on health and biomedical topics. So agriculture would not be part of our curriculum, although USC has other schools where these you know, issues might be taught, but not at our uh, medical school. Yeah, medical is mostly a biomedical um, um, research, yeah. There are more, if you go to more state school, public university, there are more programs related to agriculture and uh, environment or um, those are different focuses for for USC um, um, school like USC medical, special medical school is mostly focused on biomedical research. Yeah. Uh... Our event time is coming to an end. And uh, another one, the final one, uh, can you uh, summarize uh, the part about uh, professor uh, research in Chinese, uh, Professor Yuan? The content is very professional. And uh, this viewer uh, wants to make sure that uh, what he heard is uh, accurate. Uh, can Yuan? Uh, Professor Yang gave our audience a brief introduction in Chinese. Oh, can, can. I, 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 I,
，以呃，你想这个啊、呃、，immunotherapy 是做了几十年，前面大家都不不相信，到了最近大概啊、呃、十年左右开始有很多很多，这这个除除非是 emergency 的这种 COVID disease 这种，像这种啊、嗯、才会啊、嗯、有 regulation 就是管啊、嗯、呃政府部门才会才会批新药很快一点，正常的。啊，呃 ，drug development 就是新药开发的话都是很慢的。我们做这个 NKT 细胞呢，就是说，呃，我们是建了一个老鼠模型，呃，就是动物模型。这个模型呢，主要是应用于，啊、嗯、啊、嗯，新的抗癌。如果说他们有一个 new antibody， 或者是新的抗体，或者是新的 lipid， 比如说就像我说的这个之类一个啊、呃、激活体，它可以。用我们的啊老鼠猫的，因为做 clinical trial 是呃啊啊临床实验是非常非常贵的。你在你决定去申请临临床试验之前，你一定要把叫 preclinical， 就是说啊啊啊临床前的那些研究要研究的越透彻，你后面成功的几率越大。所以。啊、呃，真正要做临床实验的话，因为要涉及到啊、呃、，recruit patient 就是招病人，要达到一定的数量，那个都是非常非常啊、呃、昂贵的啊、呃、这个啊啊、呃呃、项目，所以所以做 preclinical 一定要做的很好，就是说用一个很好、更好的这个老鼠 model 来做的话，你的 success rate 就是成功率会更高一点，就是啊、呃，我希望你啊啊、呃呃，如果还有 question 的话，可以 email 给我，就是。Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yuan.、Uh, thank you, and、uh, that's our Q and A session. And closing to the end, now we have up to about ten thousand viewers on our living streaming platforms. Uh, it can be seen that many people really have a strong interest and、uh, search for knowledge about our guests,、uh, this topic, and、uh, professional sharing.、Uh, thank you for joining us today event.、Uh, finally, uh, Professor Axel, maybe you can give some words or suggestions to inspire our audience,、uh, which may give them a different energy. So please, Axel. Yeah, thank you. I I, I gladly do that.、Um... <clears throat> You no, know, when I, when I meet with students, I sometimes think back to my own student days, when I was at the beginning somewhat undecided what to do. And in retrospect, I realize I'm very happy with my decisions and my career choices, and I can recommend to all of you, you know, whatever direction you pursue, find also some fun in it. A lot of you know, studies that you that you pursue are tough and they require a lot of effort, but there should be some fun in it also. I remember when when I was a student, we sometimes went outside, played soccer in between just to relax, or、so、went on a jogging trip to relax, and then came back and worked until late at night in the lab. So, what whatever you decide to do, you no know, stick with it until you are sure you want to do it. And once you are sure you want to do it, then really dedicate yourself and put your energy in it, because a career in the sciences requires interest, dedication, some fun, and and the long term breath to pursue your goals. And I wish you all the best in all of that. Thank you.、Uh... Those、uh, you who saw our event,、uh, if you need more information、uh, during the preparation and the thinking process,、uh, you can send messages to USA Graduate Education in all social media accounts anytime to get some help,、uh, and you can send us、uh, the email to the professor Yuan and Axel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.、Uh, thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you. All the best.